Uh, Jumbo Silverette here, doing a, what's become some kind of a tradition on YouTube, a box opening. Frankly, I've never quite understood um, the appeal of watching someone open something for themselves, even if it's like on Christmas. Um, I mean, I could, my, watching my kids open their gifts, that's something else, but I guess it's just human curiosity. And um, some guys get pretty interested and interesting about how they open the boxes and so forth. And being the knives is kind of another one of my hobbies. I'm going to take this box and I'm going to open it with this K Bar Becker knife, which was kind of a birth or a Christmas present for myself. It comes in the sheath, it's pretty big. Got a very uh, thick spine to it, and um, you know, frankly, I got this for you know, kind of doing stuff in the uh, in the woods. But um, what the hell? Let's let's see if I can open a box. The other thing I noticed on YouTube is when people open boxes with knives, oftentimes look like they're going to kill themselves. So uh, I probably won't be any different. You should never draw a knife towards you, by the way. Really bad form. I put it on the table. It's too hard. Very sharp. Anyway, there we go. This was from, uh, you can see it's packed real nicely. This is from Customer Support in Albany, New York. Who the hell did I get this from? Anyway, let's throw out some of the junk. I'll be right back. Anyway, um, it's, mainly, it's tobacco water, although there is one thing in here which I'm going to have to sneak in. Um, we came into another thing. And this is from at the bottom of this. This should kind of give you a clue. Pipesandcigars.com, their new calendar. And they did very good service, I have to admit. They did a really good job. Um, getting it here quickly and so forth. I'll have to look at that later. Anyway, what we ended up buying was a pound of my staple, which is uh, Cornell and Deal Big and Burly. And uh, I got through this stuff pretty quickly. I don't know. It doesn't take long for me. And uh, then, okay, a tin of uh, Cornell and Deal Purple Cow, which I've not tried. It's a uh, Bob uh, Ronowski um, and uh, Craig Tarler blend. Um, their description is a classic blend from Ronowski. Contains Burley's Bright Virginia Ribbon, Latakian, Maduro, Cigar Leaf. So we'll see, you know, if it's one of those cigar blends that's hit or miss. Oh no. Then came Hearth and Holmes Old Tartan. Um, you know, I'm always on the lookout for the elusive Scottish blend. I don't even know exactly what that means, frankly. It's one that somehow was kind of European in blending. It's not heavy on Latakia, but it has Virginia to give it some natural sweetness and a few other things. And sometimes they infuse it with some, some sort of uh, essence. Something, you know, a little sweet, but not too sweet. Anyway, well, it smells good. It smells kind of smoky. It smells very good. Um, some C and D Nutty Irishman, which I've actually liked. It is an aromatic, but um, this one just works for me. It's uh, it smells very good. It's got um, some essences of liqueurs, like the Frangelico and something else. I've forgotten what the other thing was, but it's good. It smokes very cleanly and dryly, and um, it just tastes nice. It smells good to those around you. So that's not a bad thing. Um, then, this is a very um, C&D plantation evening. I used to smoke this a while ago. I haven't had it for a long time. And it's uh, 
a real mild kind of English blend. It's really nice. Um, I don't know what I'd liken it to. It's been so long since I've smoked it, but it's on the light end of the spectrum and it's tasty, but it has some body to it. It's just, it's not a heavy, um, heavy Latakia blend that's, you know, just a one note Johnny. It's got a little bit more depth than that. Let's see. And then, something I've never tried. Even I mean, I've been smoking a pipe since 80 something. And I've never tried Dunhill Royal Yacht. When I first got involved in the internet and tobaccos and things like that, which was about 83 or something like that, uh, people used to call this, uh, <laughs> they had all sorts of creative names for it. Um, Royal Yak, and uh, now people thought it tasted terrible, but I just can't imagine Dunhill really making anything all that awful. So I'm, I'm curious to try it. Exceedingly mellow blend with a grand rich flavor. We'll see. I don't know. This is current production, obviously. So, uh, I don't know who the hell makes it. And then finally, okay, a package of Zippo Flints, because you can never have enough of those. So, um, only six of these come in this kind of clever little plastic receptacle. I love the way they design this thing. It's so bizarre. This guy on uh, YouTube named Cutlery Lover, and he made a video. To, he's, a, he, he's a big Zippo collector. And um, he made a video about um, forged Zippo products. And, uh, you know, the lighters mainly. But they've even gone to the lengths of, like, imitating and copying Zippo flints, the packaging, and putting in probably, you know, sub, you know, uh, inferior flints. It is remarkable because this is like 99 cents or 60 cents. It's like costs absolutely nothing. Why people would bother to counterfeit something that cheap, I really don't know. But, you know, we live in a strange world. So that's it. Empty box, except for a receipt in there. And, you know, nothing interesting in that. So I'll give you guys, uh, I'll give you guys an update on, you know, these tobaccos and, you know, what I think of them, especially the Royal Yacht and the Purple Cow. I'm very curious about that. Anyway, for the, uh, the second portion of uh, my video, you know, it's a little bit like the Yule Log that you can see on Christmas on uh, the cable channel. Well, it is actually really a peaceful thing to uh, see a guy just sitting and smoking. I mean, I've actually spent a long time basically smoking my pipe, staring at a computer monitor, at a guy, at, <laughs> not at a guy, at an image of some guy uh, you know, anywhere around the world, who's smoking his pipe too. And it's almost like this weird form of company. Um, especially when he, when he talks, um, when he talks. He doesn't have to though. I mean, I actually watched a couple of videos of guys who just kind of sit there and, you know, the, the thoughts are so infrequent. And really is, it's almost like sitting in a cigar lounge or a pipe lounge with some other guy who has very little to say. And, um, you're just, you know, kind of quietly exchanging puffs. So, that's part two of this video. If, I mean, if you're bored, <laughs> you can watch them. Anyway, that's it for now, fellas. So, take care. Bye-bye.